Hi, my name is Jay Weeks. Now, when I was very little, I got bit by the engineering bug. I loved robots, but I mean, who doesn't? The problem was that I didn't have the resources to buy expensive robotics kits. So I started experimenting with using things that I found around the house. Cardboard, felt, glue, that sort of thing. Problem was, when I was that little, I didn't really have the engineering experience that I do now. So, I would like to address all of the young engineers and all of the older young engineers out there who are trying to get into robotics but don't necessarily want to invest right now. In this video, I'd like to show you how to create a simple platform I call BoardBot. It's made out of cardboard and some other stuff that you can find around your home. Now, it's not a complete robot. I'll show you how to solder and program it in a later video. But for now, I'd like to show you how to make this simple chassis. So, let's get started. Okay, so to start out, you're going to want to gather your supplies. Um, I've got here some duct tape, a hot glue gun, plugged in, of course, to start it warming up. Uh, some scissors, any old kind will do. I've got uh, a ruler here. This is the uh, Adafruit PCB ruler, but uh, yours doesn't need to be nearly this fancy. A pen, a simple bottle cap. I prefer soda bottle caps because they're plentiful and um, they do a good job. And my chip kit, DP32. I prefer the DP32 because it's a cheap, powerful little board and it's got a breadboard built in. I've also got a couple of motors that we salvaged and a battery pack. Now, usually I'll go with uh, four AAA or four AA batteries because those work best with boards like the DP32 or the Arduino. So, um, to start out, I want to let you know, cardboard has a sort of a grain to it, just like wood does. That grain is created by the corrugation layer inside of the two surface layers. Now, you can see right here, I've rubbed my cardboard with uh, chalk so that you guys can see the indentation that the corrugation makes. That's the grain. Um, you guys won't need to do that, so I haven't included chalk in the parts list. I'm going to make sure that my grain runs horizontally and place my board parts approximately the way that I want them on my robot. So, once I've got my parts uh, placed the way that I want them, I'm going to make some marks with my, pencil, with my pencil or with my pen for how wide this area needs to be. And then I'm just going to make another mark over here for my flap. Now, I'm making both of these flaps three inches wide because that will make them easier to divide later on. If you're uh, using metric, then I would suggest something like uh, six centimeters should be about right. So I'm also going to mark the back of my robot. And that'll give me some places uh, to act as reference. And that'll be the size of the piece of cardboard that I want to cut out. So go ahead and cut your cardboard. Now, while you're cutting your cardboard, be very careful not to bend it too far. Otherwise, you'll create a crease in your cardboard that will make it less sturdy later on. Now that we've got our cardboard cut out, um, we need to make some measurement uh, markings on our flaps. So, I made this three inches wide, so it would be easily divide, divisible by three. So I'm going to make a mark at the one and the two inch point. Now that I have these marks on the top and bottom, I'm just going to connect them with my ruler. So now that we've got our marks, um, 
we're going to want to scour these inner two marks with our scissors. Before we begin, I'm going to get a bit of scrap cardboard to place underneath because I don't want to damage this nice tabletop. Now, you've got to be very careful when scouring your cardboard like this, so kids may want to get an adult to do this step for them. And you also want to make sure that you do not cut through the entire piece of cardboard. You want to leave the bottom layer intact so that it can bend like so. So I'm going to scour all four of the marks that I made. Uh, like so. Now that I've got them scoured, they each bend very nicely. Nice and straight. So, and if you bend them over to where the marks that you made previously, the side of your, your board, they should create approximately an equilateral triangle. Now that we have our reinforcements scoured and folded, we need to uh, glue them. Before, but before we can do that, we have to transfer these guys onto the top of our robot. So the simplest way to do that is to simply guess and make a mark approximately where the end of your line is on the other side of your cardboard. And you'll want to do that for both lines, so all four ends. So now that we have these marks, we just take our trusty glue gun, fold our reinforcements over to where we want them to meet, and glue. You don't need a whole lot of glue to hold these guys down. Uh, hold them until the glue sets properly. And here we have our finished uh, robot platform. Now that we've got our robot platform uh, finished, we need to start adding our wheels and motors. Um, take your bottle cap and put it on approximately the center of the back end of your robot on the underside. Now you want to glue that down with just a couple very small beads of hot glue. You don't need much here. And the less hot glue you use, the easier it will be to remove this. So now that we have our back wheel on, we need to mount our motors. Now, I like to wrap my motors in a little bit of duct tape. That's because um, while hot glue sticks to duct tape, you can also pull it off a lot easier than things like metal. So the duct tape is going to protect our motors from the hot glue and make it a little bit easier for them to be removed if we want to do something like, say, uh, pull our motors off, replace them, um, or salvage them for another robot. So, now that both of my motors are wrapped in duct tape, um, I'm going to test out different positions on the side here. If you mount your motor too high, your robot's going to be tilted backwards. If it's too low, it's going to be tilted forwards. So try and find a motor mount that keeps your robot nice and level. So once you've got motor positions that you're happy with, um, you can go ahead and glue them on. For this one, I tend to be very generous with my hot glue because you really don't want your motors falling off. And that's our motors on. Next, we're going to want to mount our microcontroller and battery pack. I like to check and make sure ahead of time that these components do actually fit the way that they're supposed to. And then we'll usually flip them over and add some duct tape to them as well.
I don't bother wrapping them completely in duct tape because you only need to glue a small portion of them. And I personally prefer to make my duct tape a little bit smaller than my components because it will hide it from view. Once the duct tape's on, add a little bit of hot glue. And these parts are not going to be under a lot of stress, so they don't need to have very much at all, actually. Place them on, their, on your robot and wait for your glue to dry. And now we have completed our board bot. You'll notice that I have the breadboard for my DP32 hanging off the end here. What that does is it allows me a space where I can mount electronics, sensors, that sort of thing that might want to hang off the edge, like say, uh, an infrared light sensor I could use to turn this robot into a line follower. But all of that will happen in a different instructable. The nice thing about working with cardboard is that you're not restricted by a kit. All of your parts are going to be very, very cheap. You can cut them with scissors, you can apply hot glue, and you don't have to worry about messing them up. So you can do whatever you want with this robot. If you want to add a robotic arm, then that's entirely up to you. You're, you are limited only by your ingenuity.